Brooklyn Park Police will launch a new initiative this month aimed at helping people who suffer from mental health issues. But the program is kicking off months later than planned. Police will partner with Hennepin County to embed a mental health professional in the city. When an officer responds to a mental health call, several days later, a detective and the mental health professional will follow up with the person in crisis. The hope is that this intervention will reduce the burden on the courts, jails, hospitals, and ultimately the taxpayers. A lot of folks that end up in our misdemeanor queue are a lot of folks that suffer from mental illness. So we're hoping to partner with our prosecutor in the courts to maybe get those people out of the court system and get them in an area that can better help them. The two-year pilot program was supposed to begin in February, but the chief says it's been a long process to get the mental health professional selected. The overall cost to the city would be $80,000 each year. You might know the name Carol Castle from her work with the Minnesota Wrestling Hall of Fame. Castle tragically lost her son, who was a firefighter, to suicide. Now she has a new mission. I love the fact that when you're a firefighter, you got a firefighter to talk to. My son was a firefighter. I don't know what happened that night. I knew he had a fire call. I don't know what happened that night. Castle reached out to a national suicide hotline for first responders, police, and firefighters called Safe Call Now. She had the idea to sell a coin to then give to police and firefighters to keep in their pocket or gym bag. The coins would have the hotline's number to reach out when they need help. I call them life coins. Uh, this is a lifeline for someone. They're heavy duty. You know, when they're in your pocket, you're going to know you have a lifeline in your pocket. We need to get one in everybody, every first responder's pocket. I truly believe this is going to save lives. I truly believe that. The coins cost $10 and all proceeds go to Safe Call Now. Castle hopes to expand her mission beyond first responders to include help for corrections officers, wrestlers, and their families as well. There's another option to properly dispose of prescription drugs in Brooklyn Park. In conjunction with North Memorial Health, they now have a drop box where people can get rid of meds anytime they want. There's another option to properly dispose of prescription drugs. Brooklyn Park, in conjunction with North Memorial Health, now has a drop box where people can get rid of meds anytime they want. The drop box is inside the Brooklyn Park Police Station, located at 5400 85th Avenue North. It's available 24 hours a day. Disposal options like this one help keep drugs out of landfills, but they also help combat the opioid crisis. In 2018, there were 152 overdose cases in Brooklyn Park. Most youngsters in the city who become addicted to opioids first get their drugs at home. It's innocent enough, so you, uh, we go to the doctor and we may get some pain medicine and then we feel better and we don't take all the pain medicine. And then we put, like everybody does, put the bottle back in the medicine cabinet and leave it there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, over time, those things start to disappear and there's an interest in the community for them and uh, they end up finding legs and getting out in our community and in the wrong hands. There are also uh, medicine drop boxes in Brooklyn Center, Golden Valley, Maple Grove, and Osseo. Sometimes you don't have to go far to find work you're passionate about, which is the case for a Cooper grad who is still honing her craft as well as teaching younger kids the finer points of theater. Here is Neil Persley. It's funny, when people are crossing downstage singing, should you cross in front of them or should you cross behind them? Marley Ritchie realizes that for many of these Sandberg Middle School students, this is their first introduction to theater. Let's take this one from the top. Me teaching the kids what downstage is is a cool honor to teach them the right way of theater etiquette and everything. Richie is a 2017 graduate of Cooper High School where she credits much of what she's learned to Gretchen Wurzer Palm, her high school theater instructor. She came to me today because she needed something and I'm who she comes to and I love that. Like that's that's so gratifying. She's giving me all these ideas and everything and I say, so I'm thinking of this and she's like, that, that can be good. 
or, and then she just helps me find my way. Since graduation, Marley has been pursuing the art she loves and instilling that passion in younger kids. Miss Marley's been a great director and she like always gets a lot of work done and we get it done fast. She's been really fun to work with. She's really nice and you know, she's like, she's good with like being strict, but she's also good with having fun with everyone. I'm so proud to see what she's decided to do. Um, she graduated from high school wanting to be an actress. That's what she wanted to do. And I still think that she has a certain amount of um, that's still in her. All my teaching I learned from words. So when I say like shoot a pickle or hold the phone or razzle or any of those things I say with my kids, it's all because words said that with me. And so I use it with my kids. Marley's one, next two, act is three, still to four, be written, but she is just one example of a bright and shining star who learned from her mentors at Cooper and continues to pass it forward in life after high school. So I'm really excited to see a lot of these kids go to high school and then I get to watch them. Neil Persley, CCX News. Dig it. Don't like bend your leg. A principal at Oakview Elementary in Maple Grove calls a recent honor the most honorable experience in her career. The Minnesota School Counselors Association named Principal Ann Mock as Administrator of the Year. The award honors educators who have improved school counseling services and promoted equity and access for all students to maximize student achievement. Mock is the second Osseo employee to receive this award in the past two years. The historic item farm in Brooklyn Park is preparing for a busy spring and summer season. Part of that includes bringing the animals out to the farm and giving a special cow a name. This year, a girl named Natalie won the cow contest. She picked the name Barnaby. You can see Barnaby this summer during Tater Days. Maple Grove and Champlin Park came into the Section 5 4A softball tournament as the top two seeds. After the Crimson beat the Rebels earlier in the tournament, Champlin Park battled back to reach the championship round. Top seed Maple Grove needing one win to advance to state, Champlin Park needing two. In the bottom of the third, Maple Grove's Jade Tomashek singles up the middle. Mava Sachs comes in to score the first run of the game as Maple Grove is up 1-0 after three. The Rebels load the bases in the top of the fifth inning with two outs, but Emma Berge hits it well. But right at right fielder Kate Kapsner, and she catches it for the third out. Tomashek has the biggest hit of the game in the home half of the fifth inning as she pounds it to deep left field and it gets to the fence. Corin Palanch and Dorothy Duick score as Tomashek doubles, and Maple Grove has a big three to nothing lead. And pitcher Ava Dueck makes that lead hold up, throwing a shutout as the Crimson advance to the state tournament for the eighth time. 3-0 Maple Grove is the final, but Nilde St. Margaret's is also headed to state in Class 3A softball. In baseball, the Section 6-4A tournament continues into the week ahead. Two local squads have played their way into the winner's bracket final. Third seed Hopkins met second seed St. Louis Park in the second round. Top of the first and the Royals Calvin Harris slices a hit to the gap in left center. Jason Schumacher and Wyatt Nelson score and it's two to nothing in favor of Hopkins. Harris comes through again in inning number three as he'll ground a single to right field scoring two more runs. Hopkins gets seven runs in the inning. They go on to win it 11 to one in six. In the first game of the second round, top seed Wyzetta face number four Armstrong. Armstrong's Drew Eide drops a single into center field in the top of the first. Tyler Shell scores as the Falcons get a lot of base runners early. In the third, Eide with a bunt and the throw to first is wide. Jordan Page scores and the Trojans are shaking the field early. It's 2-0 Falcons after three. Wyzetta loads the bases with no outs in the fifth. But they get just one run as Carter Tibbetts lifts a fly ball to right. Cullen Stamp tags up to score, and Keegan Nickel just avoids the tag at third base. It's two to one Armstrong. A.J. Sternix escapes the jam as he gets the last batter he faces, and Colin Spellman finishes with two innings of strong relief. Hopkins and Armstrong meet Monday afternoon in the winner's bracket final at Hopkins, with the winner going to the section final. Wyzetta is still alive as well. 
Section tournament play is underway in high school lacrosse, too. One local team scored a huge comeback in the opening round. Eighth seed Champlain Park hosted Anoka in a first round game in section seven. Anoka goes up big. Troy Wahlberg with the high shot for a seven to two Tornadoes lead in quarter number three. But Champlain Park fights back strong. Roy Johnson with a hesitation move and he'll go high with the shot to tie the game at 8-8 with under two minutes to play. And in overtime, it's Johnson doing it again. He dodges the defenders and turns to score with the low shot as Champlain Park wins 9-8. They were, though, eliminated by Centennial in the quarterfinals. Section semifinals in all local sections are set for Monday. Amir Coffey announced this week that he'll stay in the NBA draft and forego his senior season at the University of Minnesota. There was some speculation Coffey might remove himself from the draft and return to the Gophers for one more season, but that deadline passed. Last season, Coffey averaged 16 and a half points, three and a half rebounds, and three assists per game while leading the Gophers to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Coffey chose the U after a standout career at Hopkins High School in which he was named Mr. Basketball as a senior. Now, draft projections have Coffey being picked anywhere from 45th to possibly being unselected. The NBA draft is coming up June 20th, and that's at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. That's all for sports.